I do still think there are going to be some really strange or scary moments. Uh, The fact that, like, so far the technology has not produced a really scary giant risk doesn't mean it never will. So Sam Altman finally just said it, what OpenAI ex-scientists are warned us about. Because for a long time, the people building AGI have spoken in carefully crafted keynotes and polished PR statements. But every once in a while, the corporate speak fades away and they just say it. They tell you what's actually on their mind. Recently, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman sat down for an interview with the venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz. He didn't just talk about the future, he gave us a clear and frankly a scary warning about what's really coming. So one of the first questions he's asked is what will AI models be able to do in a few years that they can't do today? His answer's pretty wild. Within the next couple of years, what will models be able to do that they're not able to do today? Will be sort of white collar, uh, you know, replacement at a much deeper level, AI scientist, uh, humanoids, I mean, a, a, a lot of things, but you touched on the one that I am most excited about, which is the, the AI scientist. Yeah. This is crazy that we're sitting here seriously talking about this. The, I know there's like a quibble on what the Turing test literally is, but, but the popular conception of the Turing test sort of went whooshing by. Yeah, that was fast. Yeah. You know, it was just like, we talked about it as this <laughs> most important test of AI for a long time. It seemed impossibly far away. Then all of a sudden it was passed. The world freaked out for like a week, two weeks. And then it's like, all right, I guess computers like can do that now. (laughs) And everything just went on. And I think that's happening again with science. Uh, My own personal like equivalent of the Turing test has always been when AI can do science. Like that is always like that is a real change to the world. And for the first time with GPT-5, we are seeing these little, little examples where it's happening. You see these things on Twitter. It did this, it made this novel math discovery and did this small thing in my, you know, my physics research, my biology research. And everything we see is that that's going to go much further. So in two years, I think the models will be doing bigger chunks of science and making important discoveries. And that is a crazy thing. Like that will have a significant impact on the world. I am, I am a believer that to a first order, scientific progress is what makes the world better over time. And if we're about to have a lot more of that, That's a big change. The AI scientist. Stop. Just let that phrase sink in for a second. This is a force multiplier for all human knowledge, an engine that accelerates the very process of discovery itself. Think about that for a second. This is like inventing the printing press or the scientific method again, a meta invention, one that doesn't just solve a single problem, but amplifies our ability to solve every problem. And this isn't some sci-fi fantasy. It's already happening. In 2023, Google's DeepMind used AI to discover 22 million new crystal structures, materials that had never existed before. That's the equivalent of 800 years of human scientific progress condensed into just a few weeks. And now with GPT-5, we're seeing the first hints of something even stranger. AI beginning to invent new mathematics concepts no human has ever written down. That's the upside. Curing diseases, reversing climate change, unlocking the next great frontiers of science. A future so bright, you almost have to squint. But, and this is where the conversation takes a turn, because Altman's excitement gives way to this very sober, very serious realism. Because if the good stuff can whoosh by before we can even process it, so can the bad stuff. And here he gives us maybe the most brutally honest warning I've ever heard from him. Um, well, but to that end, h- how have you sort of evolved your thinking? You mentioned you evolved your thinking on sort of uh, you know, vertical integration. How have you evolved your thinking? What's the latest thinking on sort of AI stewardship, you know, safety? What's the latest thinking on that? I do still think there are going to be some... really strange or scary moments uh the fact that like so far the technology has not produced a really scary giant risk doesn't mean it never will it also like there's we're talking about it's kind of weird to have like billions of people talking to the same 
brain. Like wow. there may be these weird societal skill things that are already happening. We that aren't scary in the big way, but are just sort of different. Um, but I expect like, I expect some really bad stuff to happen because of the technology, which also has happened with previous technologies. And mm-hmm. I think all the way back to fire. Yeah. yeah. And I think we'll like develop some guardrails around it as a, as a society. Yeah. What, what is sort of your latest thinking on the, the right mental models we should have around the, the right regulatory f- frameworks to, to think about or, or the ones we shouldn't be thinking about? Um, I think most, I think the right thing to, I I think most regulation, uh, probably has a lot of downside. The one thing I would like is as the models get, the thing I would most like is as the models get truly like extremely superhuman capable, um, I think those models and only those models are probably worth some sort of like very careful safety testing uh, as as the frontier pushes back. Um, I don't want a big bang either. Mm -hmm. And you can see a bunch of ways that could go very seriously wrong. But I hope we'll only focus the regulatory burden on that stuff and not all of the wonderful stuff that less capable models can do that you could just have like a European style complete crampdown on and that would be very bad. Yeah. It seems like the, the thought experiment that, okay, there's going to be a model down the line that is a super, super human intelligence that could, you know, do some kind of takeoff light thing. We really do need to wait till we get there. Uh, um, or like at least we get to a much bigger scale or we get close to it. Um, because Nothing is going to pop out of your lab in the next week that's going to do that. And I, I think that's where we as an industry kind of confuse the regulators. Yeah. Uh, because I think you, you really could, one, you damage America in particular in that, um, like China's not going to have that kind of restriction. And, and you getting behind um, in AI, I think, would be very dangerous for the world. Extremely dangerous. Yeah. Extremely dangerous. Much more dangerous than not regulating something we don't know how to do yet. Yeah. Listen to the words he's using. He doesn't say if, he expects really strange or scary moments. This is the CEO of the world's leading AI company telling us point blank to brace for impact. This is the classic dual use problem. Fire cooks our food and burns down our houses. AI is the ultimate dual use tech and we are already seeing the first tremors. Early 2024, that AI cloned robocall from President Biden trying to suppress votes in a primary, that was a strange and scary moment. That was a direct attack on democracy powered by this tech. The genie is out of that bottle. Altman's not fear-mongering. This is ground-level reality from the guy building the engine. We are building something so powerful that its negative consequences are not a possibility, but a statistical inevitability. And that brings us to the most physical problem in all of this. The thing you can't just code your way out of. Power. Electrical power. AI isn't a cloud. It's silicon and copper and cooling fans in buildings the size of stadiums that consume an absolutely insane amount of energy. To get to AGI, to get to that AI scientist, we're going to need a fundamental rewiring of our planet. I expect in the short term, it will be most of the net new in the U.S. will be natural gas Mm -hmm. relative to at least base load energy. In the long term, I expect it'll be, I don't know what the ratio, but the two dominant sources will be uh, solar plus storage and nuclear. Mm -hmm. I think some combination of those two will win the future, like the long-term future. In the long-term, right. And advanced nuclear, meaning SMRs, fusion, the whole, the whole stack. And how, how fast do you think that's, that's coming on the nuclear side where where it's really at scale? Cause you know, obviously there's a lot of people building it. Yeah. Um, but (laughs) we we have to completely legalize it and all that kind of thing. I I think it kind of depends on the price if it is completely crushingly economically dominant over everything else, mm-hmm. 
then I expect to happen pretty fast. Yeah. Again, if you like study the history of energy, when you have these major transitions to a much cheaper source, the world moves over pretty quickly. Yeah. The cost of energy is just so important. Yeah. So if if nuclear gets radically cheap relative to anything else we can do, I'd expect there's a lot of political pressure to get the NRC to move quickly on it and we'll find a way to build it fast. If it's around the same price as other sources, I expect the kind of anti-nuclear sentiment to overwhelm and it to take a really long time. Yeah. The whole stack, fusion, small modular reactors, he's talking about a complete reinvention of our global energy grid. And again, this is where you have to watch what people do, not just what they say. Sam Altman has personally invested over $375 million of his own money into Helion Fusion Energy. He's the chairman of Oklo, an advanced nuclear company. And that is the context for the wild reports that Altman is trying to raise up to $7 trillion for AI chips and energy infrastructure. That number sounds insane until you realize the scale of the problem he sees coming. The AI revolution isn't just about software, it's an industrial revolution measured in exawatts. Okay, so let's put this all together. We're building AI scientists that will change humanity forever. We are facing inevitable, strange and scary civilizational risks, and we need to build a new planetary grid powered by nuclear fusion just to keep the lights on. So with all of that on his mind, what's the number one thing their team is focused on right now? the big immediate problem they're trying to solve? The answer is the most perfect and maybe the most terrifying summary of where we are. On OpenAI, what's, what's the latest thinking in terms of monetization, in terms of either certain experiments or cer certain things that you could see yourself spending more time or less, less time on you know, different models that you're excited about? Or... The thing that's top of mind for me like right now, just because it just launched and there's so much usage, is what we're going to do for Sora. Yeah. Um, Another thing you learn once you launch one of these things is how people use them versus how you think they're going to use them. Yeah. And people are certainly using Sora the ways we thought they were going to use it, but they're also using it in these ways that are very different. Like people are generating funny memes of them and their friends and sending them in a group chat. And that will require a very different, yeah. like Sora videos are expensive to make. Yeah. Uh, right. So that will require a very different, you know, for people that are doing that like hundreds of times a day. It's going to require a very different monetization method and the kinds of things we were, we were thinking about. I think it's yeah. very cool that the thesis of Sora, which is people actually want to create a lot of content, it's, it's not that, you know, the traditional naive thing that it's like 1% of users create content, 10% leave comments, and 100% view. Maybe a lot more want to create content, but it's just been harder to do. And I think that's a very cool change, but it does mean that we got to figure out a very different monetization model for this than we were thinking about if people want to create that much i assume it's like some version of you have to charge people per generation per generation when 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 it's this expensive um but that's like a new thing we haven't had to really think about before funny memes we just went from agi and existential risk and rewiring the planet with fusion reactors back to figuring out the business model for generating funny videos to send in a group chat and look, this is not a criticism. This is the most profound observation of the entire interview. This is the whooshing by paradox in real time. The exact same foundational technology that might one day cure cancer is today being used for entertainment, for slop talk. The question is, as this technology keeps whooshing by, are we becoming a society of empowered creators? Or are we just becoming the most distracted consumers in human history? I genuinely want to know what you think. Drop a comment below. And if this gave you something to chew on, you know what to do. Hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the tech that's actually shaping our future. Peace.